Hi, and welcome to our new Patreon episode of The Unseen Podcast, a podcast dedicated to missing people, unresolved cases, and UK true crime. Today we are going to be exploring the disappearance of 16-year-old Ruth Wilson in Surrey in 1995. I recently watched an excellent documentary called Vanished, the Surrey Schoolgirl, about her disappearance, and have since researched the case. It is full of mystery, and the fact that nothing has been found of Ruth since is a huge concern. This documentary, amongst other research, has helped me massively in writing this episode and I would highly recommend it. I will leave the information in the notes. As always, this episode contains descriptions that some listeners may find distressing, so listener discretion is advised. The area of Darking is a market town in Surrey in the southeast of England. It's a leafy area in quite an affluent part of the UK. It is an area known for its outstanding beauty, is a commuter town and also a popular retirement place. The village of Betchworth lies about three miles from the town of Darking and is a very small place, with only 919 residents being recorded on the 2001 census. It's a traditional English village set in the suburbs with a number of listed buildings and lovely countryside views. It was in the village of Betchworth where the Wilson family lived in 1995. Ian and Karen Wilson were both teachers, and Ian had two daughters from a previous marriage, Ruth, aged 16, and Jenny, aged 13. The family were like any other family, and it's reported that those that knew them found them to be happy and stable. Ruth attended the local high school and had just entered the sixth farm there. She was known to attend handbell ringing classes at the local church and went to the youth club. Her friends and those that knew her described her as having an unconventional dress sense and she had a Saturday job at a local music shop in Darking. On Monday the 27th of November 1995, the Wilson family set out as usual to work. It was reported in an article by The Guardian by Martin Bright in 2002 that it was a busy morning in the Wilson household. Ruth's father Ian was in a rush as he was head of science at a secondary school and they were busy preparing for an Ofsted inspection. Ofsted is the regulatory body in the UK that inspects schools and reports on their findings. In this article, Ian recollects that he said to Ruth something like, Out of my way, I'm in a hurry. This he said he regrets were the last words that he said to her. Karen, her stepmom, was also in a rush as the deputy head of a local primary school. The morning sounded quite manic, and when it came time to catch the bus, Ruth said something surprising to Jenny. She said she wasn't catching the bus to school that day, as the sisters normally did. She explained that she was going to go to the library instead and do some work. Jenny would later say to the Guardian about this exchange, I wasn't entirely surprised, because she was in sixth form, and she didn't always come in for the whole day. I thought it was a bit strange that she left it so last minute to tell me, but that's all. The day continued as normal for the rest of the Wilson family, however Ruth didn't attend school at all that day. When Karen and Ian arrived home, they realised that Ruth wasn't there, and that she had not been to school as usual. As the day turned into evening and Ruth still wasn't home, the Wilsons decided to contact the police. The Surrey police came out immediately to speak to Ruth's family and to try and figure out what they knew her last movements to be. They also sent out sniffer dogs in an attempt to trace Ruth's route after she left home and also deployed helicopters with heat-seeking equipment. After inquiries had been conducted with the family, it was unclear why Ruth would not have returned home and it did not initially seem like she would have run away. Police immediately began searching for any information about Ruth's day as they could to try and pinpoint where she had last been seen. They knew that Ruth had not attended school that day and they set about figuring out where she had been. As they investigated further, they found that Ruth had actually travelled to a florist in the town. It was found that she ordered some flowers for her stepmother, Karen, and she asked for them to be delivered two days later. This was confusing, as there did not appear to be any reason why Ruth decided to do this. The investigators were then able to trace Ruth's movements to the train station, where she got in a taxi. When the taxi driver was tracked down, he was able to explain what had happened when he had picked Ruth up. He explained that she had asked to be taken to Box Hill. Box Hill is known as a local beauty spot and is a summit which is located in the North Downs. The driver took her to the area and he dropped her off at a bridleway by the side of the road. 
The driver said once he had dropped her off, he found it strange as she didn't begin to walk off anywhere. He explained that usually when he dropped someone off, they immediately began to head off to their intended destination. However, in Ruth's case, this didn't happen. He said it was a little unnerving that Ruth simply stood in the same spot when she left the taxi, and the driver said that as he drove off, he watched her in his mirror. This did stand out to him as unusual, and he was able to recount this to police. Through the investigation, the police were able to narrow in on the area of Box Hill. It wasn't clear why Ruth had travelled up to Box Hill, and while it was a place that people would often hang around, it was not necessarily somewhere that Ruth would often be seen. The police decided to search the area, and they did find some objects that they believed belonged to Ruth. They uncovered some paracetamol pills and three letters, one reportedly to her parents and two to her friends. The content of the letters have never been divulged or published by police. Ruth herself, however, was not found in the area, or in any of the other search areas. The truth was, no one had seen Ruth since around 4.30pm that day, and there was no further evidence to indicate where she might have gone next, or if indeed she had gone anywhere. Ruth's family were growing increasingly concerned about her continued disappearance, and the circumstances surrounding it appeared very odd. The fact that she hadn't moved when the taxi driver dropped her off suggested to some that either she did not want the driver to know where she was going, or perhaps she was waiting for someone to pick her up from the road. Ruth's actions that day certainly provoked some questions. Why had she decided not to go to school? Why had she ordered the flowers? And why had she travelled to Box Hill? There were many questions that did not have any easy answers. Police turned to Ruth's home life and her actions prior to her disappearance to attempt to answer some of these questions. That weekend had seemed quite normal for Ruth. She had been working at her part-time job at the music shop on the weekend and had then spent some time with her ex-boyfriend William. She had had a meal with him that Saturday and then on the Sunday she had attended handbell practice at the church and had then gone to youth club. She then went back to William's house for tea and returned home. Her family remembered that she had returned home happy as William's mother had given her some old clothes of hers and Ruth and her sister tried some of them on together. The weekend appeared to be normal and there were no outward indications that anything was wrong. The police were therefore trying to figure out what had possibly happened to Ruth. Had she met someone at Box Hill? Had she come across someone who wanted to harm her? Or had she ran away? None of the scenarios, however, could be proven as Ruth had not yet been found. The search continued to try and find her and a huge investigation ensued, involving interviewing her family and those close to her. This investigation, however, sadly did not lead anywhere, and Ruth could not be found. The years went by with no answers to what happened to Ruth and her family and friends continued to wonder where she was. Her case had a real impact on the community in Darking, However, as time moved on, so did other investigations. This meant that Ruth's case remained a mystery with what happened to her and why still unknown. It was as though she had simply disappeared off the face of the earth. In the years afterwards, it was established that Ruth did not appear to have used her bank card, despite having it on her when she disappeared, and she had not paid any tax or used any public services. This of course set off alarm bells for those that were following the case. If she had run away, she would surely have had to use some services over the years. After the disappearance, there was not much publicised about Ruth and the circumstances surrounding what happened. This was partly due to the fact that Ruth's family did not necessarily want to be hounded by the media and the police did not publish any new information about her case. Two men would later do more investigation into Ruth's disappearance. It's reported in the article by Martin Bright for The Guardian in 2018 that he was contacted by a retired police officer from Northern Ireland called Liam McCauley. Martin Bright had written about Ruth's case at the time and in subsequent years, and McCauley expressed his interest in finding out what happened to her. He had reportedly become interested in Ruth's disappearance when he moved to Dorking in the 90s and read about the case. Martin Bright's article and Liam McCauley himself in the documentary stated that the police told him the investigation was ongoing and therefore documents from the case could not be shared with the public. The two men decided to investigate Ruth's disappearance by speaking to people who were close to her and that is how the documentary Vanished the Surrey Schoolgirl came about. 
Liam McCauley, according to the article in The Guardian, said to Martin Bright that the case had always bothered him, and he said, quote, Nobody can actually just vanish. I think something terrible has happened to her. Somebody knows where she is. During the documentary, some of those close to Ruth, including her friends and her ex-boyfriend William, who she had spent the weekend with, were interviewed. They described an average 16-year-old who was working at the weekends, attending church and listening to music. Her ex-boyfriend described her as having an unconventional dress sense, although she was also traditional. Her friends said that they, along with Ruth, were not necessarily the most popular people at school, however they were close-knit and they got on well. The image that many people had of Ruth was that she was living a happy and stable life and that there was no reason why she had just disappeared. This is what had made the investigation so strange and difficult to understand. When her friends were spoken to, however, a different picture of Ruth began to emerge. This was one that suggested that perhaps more was going on in her life than initially met the eye. When interviewed, some of her friends explained that they had wondered how she could have disappeared for 22 years without having a passport or a large amount of money. They also explained that they believed she could have intended to go missing and had expressed that she wanted to be away from home. It was unknown, however, if she had expressed that she wanted to go away forever or just a period of time. This was a different image of Ruth than had previously been depicted, as up until that point it was believed that there would have been no reason why she would have wanted to leave. Another of Ruth's friends spoke to the documentary and explained that Ruth had had an awful lot going on at home and would often stay with her as she didn't want to return home. The reason for this was reportedly something that she had recently found out before her disappearance. Ruth had always believed that her biological mother had died when she was young after she'd fallen down the stairs. This was of course tragic for Ruth, however it was known that just before she went missing, she had been digging into the past and finding out more about her mother. She discovered that her mother had not died after falling down the stairs, but she had committed suicide by hanging herself. This, it is believed, she found out from her death certificate. This would have been shocking and upsetting for Ruth to find out, and of course it meant that she had also not known the truth for her entire life. This was an important revelation, as it meant that just before she went missing, she had come across something life-changing that may have made her re-evaluate her future. At only 16, this news would have been even more profound for her. This had not been mentioned during the initial investigation, and it seemed as though it had either not been known at the time, or it was not deemed as relevant to her disappearance. Her friend believed that this could possibly have contributed to her general mood, and her reluctance to want to return home before she went missing. The documentary had previously reached out to the Wilson family to ask if they wanted to be a part of it. They had respectfully declined to be involved, as well as Surrey Police, who explained that as Ruth had not been found, they were open to all new leads in the investigation. After the statements made by some of Ruth's friends, however, the Wilson family did respond to the documentary, with a statement explaining that they did not believe that Ruth's childhood had been based on secrecy and lies, had had been said by one of her friends, but were saddened to learn that Ruth had discovered the information about her mother, and had decided not to share this with her family. Could this have had an effect on Ruth's decision to escape her life? Those close to Ruth speculated that she seemed as though she had been planning to run away and had actually spoken about it while one of her friends told the documentary that she wouldn't rule out the fact that Ruth had travelled to Box Hill to commit suicide. During the initial investigation into Ruth's disappearance, there appeared to be no reason why she had wanted to leave her life and the circumstances seemed very strange. While the way in which Ruth disappeared does still seem odd, perhaps the reason she may have wanted to leave was a little clearer. Had Ruth left Betchworth to live somewhere else? Had she gone up to Box Hill to meet someone who had helped her set up a new life? Or did she travel up there to commit suicide or encountered a dangerous person who wanted to harm her? There are so many unanswered questions in Ruth's case, and the fact that the police have never found her body also means that the idea she could still be alive and living somewhere else is still possible. The fact that she has never used her bank account or showed up on any official records does however cast doubt on this theory too. There have been appeals over the years for Ruth to come forward if she is still alive, however all of these appeals have gone unanswered. Despite huge searches of the area close to Box Hill and the surrounding locations, no trace of Ruth has ever been found. 
There are many odd facts about this case. Ruth visiting the florist and ordering flowers is one of those strange facts. Why did she do this? Her friend in the documentary explained that she had planned on disappearing or committing suicide. She believed that it would have been very like Ruth's sense of humour to send the flowers. The exact reason she did this, however, is of course unknown. The fact that Ruth left letters behind also seems to suggest that she had either harmed herself or left to live a new life. The idea of her being able to lead another life, however, seems strange as it appeared that she only had the clothes that she was wearing and did not have any money to live on. Surrey police maintain that Ruth's case is still open and that it will still be investigated if any other leads come in. The case was given the name Operation Scholar and it is reviewed periodically for any new information. It's reported that Operation Scholar has followed up on possible sightings of Ruth over the years. Appeals were made on the 10-year anniversary of her disappearance and Sergeant Shane Craven from the East Surrey Missing Persons team told Surrey Live In the weeks following Ruth's disappearance there were some fairly reliable sightings of her in the darking area by people who knew her well. One of these sightings reportedly involved a distressed young woman who went into a newsagent's two miles from Box Hill. She reportedly asked for a copy of each of the newspapers and got upset when they were already sold out. The owner of the shop thought that it was so strange that she saved the CCTV footage and showed it to the police. Ruth's parents reportedly saw the footage and believed that the young girl was Ruth. There were also reports of sightings of her in Canada. Sergeant Craven also appealed for anyone that knew anything about her disappearance to come forward with information that they may not, for whatever reason, been able to divulge before. Ruth's parents also made a statement saying, In the ten years since Ruth went missing, there has not been a day when we haven't thought of her, missed her and loved her. They went on to say, we cannot bear the thought of enduring another ten years of not being with Ruth, or knowing if she is alive and well. We love her too much for that. Martin Bright sent in the information that had been found out about Ruth's life and state of mind before her disappearance to the police, to hopefully aid in the investigation. Both Martin Bright and Liam McCauley maintain that they will continue looking for answers in Ruth's case, and Martin Bright explained at the end of the documentary that he was annoyed by the way he'd reported on the case initially, as he had portrayed a young woman who was happy with her life and her family, and he now knew that that was not necessarily the case. Whatever the reason was for Ruth's disappearance, and whether she created a new life for herself, or her body is yet to be found, The sad fact is that her family and friends still do not know what happened to her. There is always hope that missing people will be found despite the time that has elapsed since their disappearances. Ruth would be 40 years old today and it would be amazing if we could find out any information about what has happened to her in those years. If you know anything about the disappearance of Ruth Wilson you can contact the Missing People charity at 116-000 or Surrey Police on 101. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Please let me know what you think about it. I for one know that Ruth's story affected me when I was researching it. Thank you for being so patient while I got my voice back and for being so supportive as always. I want to wish you all a happy new year and best wishes for 2020. Thanks for listening to this Patreon episode. I hope you all know you're amazing. As always, I'm Caprice and this has been Unseen. Unseen.